Previously on the Adventure Zone. Hurley says, Surely you all are familiar with the, the racing that takes place outside of town. Oh yeah, big fans. She went by the Raven and I went by the Ram. It's customary for battle wagon racers to be anonymous. And I've put together a vehicle I know I can beat her in. Mine it requires uh, what's called an arcane core. Fortunately, there's a rival group of racers called the Hammerheads. And they just got on a shipment. You don't care if these guys get killed, right? I do. I, I do. You can't. Oh, you gee. can't. I use thaumaturgy. Uh, to Mama make a Turgy train? Sh- and the uh, the littlest one, uh, standing outside by the gate, uh, scampers off. You, you stay here, I'll go inside and check with the boss, and then... Uh, Sounds great. I change myself to look exactly like Jerry. Listen to me, little Jerry. Give me a hand. I'll walk you to the john. Sa- Sounds great. Do the Stone of Far speech. <laughs> uh, Taco, or uh, Merlin Magnus, you hear, uh, Wait a minute, who's that coming down the street? Wait a minute, that looks like, that looks like you, little Jerry. What the hell is going on? Oh, shit. I certainly hope none of you are allergic to pickles! Because our heroes are in one. It's the Adventure Zone! Taco disguised himself as Lil' Jerry, came and lured out the booth guard because he had to go to the bathroom. Uh, but while walking him to the bathroom away from you two, um, they ran into the real Lil' Jerry. And Taco took care of that? <laughs> no, I, like, we're still like living that right we're now. In a, oh, we're that's in a, the moment we're in. That's the Matthew McConaughey moment that we have to li- breathe through. Time is a flat yeah. circle. Exactly. Okay. All right. Uh, should, uh, should I start or what before should... we get started? I want to real quick say we got um, from Lucas Polanski this week. What are you really, doing? Well, we got some D twenty keychains from Lucas, and they're really really beautiful. And I want to say thank you before I forgot. Okay, great. Like, do you have no respect for narrative? That was part of the narrative. That was all in character. You ever notice at the beginning of Casablanca, like (laughs) Humphrey Bogart is like, and straight up, hold up, props to to Craft Services. Shout out to Tide for sponsoring (laughs) this production. In real life, would that not have made that a way more awesome movie? It would have been a cool movie. If he just like looked into the camera and said, also, thanks, Steven, for the background before this shot. Let's What's go. this old timey movie you're talking about? All right, uh, hip, hip. Also, eat Doritos. I'm Casablanca. <laughs> Thanks Man, for watching. I, can I just compliment I'm Captain all, Blanca? Can I uh, compliment all of us on our Humphrey Bogart impressions too? Hey, I can actually I, hey, do can a I, Humphrey Bogart imitation. Hey, you gotta well, eat these. Play it again, doesn't. Sham. That's you, good. You gotta eat these Doritos. See, it's a, like a spicy <laughs> tortilla chip. That was Mo from the Three Stooges. <laughs> it's the latest thing from Mexico. <laughs> Check out the new Mexican treat, Doritos. <laughs> we call them Mexican crunch chips. <laughs> Um, you know, so, potato chips, right? This is going to run these right out of business. <laughs> Justin, I feel like you're stalling because you, nobody knows what they're going to do. I've got, no, I've got it. I've got my situation on lock. You want okay. me to start? We kick it off? Lil Jerry sees uh, the two of you walking and says, hey, that looks like me. What's going on? Holy shit, an imposter. I cast sleep. <laughs> <laughs> on whom? On Lil Jerry. <laughs> okay. How do we resolve this, this spell cast? Uh, let me pop open my, uh, my handy dandy spell, uh, manual here, and I'll tell you exactly the answer to the question which you have so kindly asked to me. Actually, you know, if you had these nifty spell cards like I have, you wouldn't need that old-fashioned computer. No, God, that's... we absolutely need to get all of you all of those before we do the live show. Ugh, these are the coolest. I don't use spells. Do I? Do I have like? Yeah, Travis, cards is, Travis has. Where I punch. Travis has one spell card, and it just has punch. It says punch, punch, roll, punch. The, roll dice to punch. <laughs> to be fair, I also have a kick. Card. I've got kick, punch, and it's all in the mind. Do you okay. not have a headbutt card? Uh, Magnus would never risk his money maker. He has okay. a head and a butt card. Oh, and a folding the middle chair. You don't. Want, you don't want to know what the butt card does. Justin sure is taking you a while to find that spell, my dude. Well, you <laughs> can't read. Okay, it's a first level enchantment. Uh-huh. Uh, the creature with the lowest hit points. 
So I roll. That's going to be a little Jerry. Yeah, I roll five d eight. That's that's if it's split. So oh, I roll right, right. Five d eight. Yeah, if I remember I beat this. His hit points. Yeah, go for it. Okay, just grab They're right over here. What? Oh, They're thanks, right Pop. Uh, that's a little diamond shape. Okay. Uh, three, six. Three. Mafia. Oh, sorry. <laughs> six. Sign of the beast. And five. Okay. So that's. I don't know. Three six three six. Twenty three. L- little Jerry. Right. Little Jerry says, "What the hell is going on?" <laughs> and he falls to the ground. Okay, uh, who's with me? Do I have a name of the guy who's with me? Uh, you don't know his name. He was the guy in the booth. Uh, and he goes, "Okay, well, I guess that. Uh, I guess that explains that." Um, can, can you believe this? It looks like we're getting infiltrated. But so he was trying to infiltrate us, and then he just passed out. Did he get spooked or something? Listen, we need to check on... Listen, what would the boss be the angriest about if we lost? The core, right? We need to go check on the core. Make sure it's okay. Because we're obviously under some sort of threat here. Yeah, I mean, you got a pretty good point. Um, I, 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 I feel like we need to grab old Jerry, though. The fake old Jerry. Fake old Jerry and kill him. I'm Bra- totally with you on this. We need to kill him. Well, this no, fake old Jerry. No, I was saying fake old Jerry. We could bring inside and we got to interrogate him. When did you out. turn it... When did you go soft? Huh? Would you go soft? Well, no. It's just like we need to gather information. We know? were going up. We were going up together in the streets out there in the streets of Gold Cliff. <laughs> you, we, you were never soft. We you met saw, like two you saw months, a dead bird. We met you, like two months ago. You saw a dead bird. You'd step on it. You'd say, "I hate birds." You were you had, had no heart. Heartless Hank. We called you. Was it Hank? Remind me what your real name is, because I can only remember the great nicknames I've given you over the months. <laughs> You've never called me heartless, Hank. What are you, what are you, what are you saying? Sorry, he had a seizure. Let's listen, we gotta kill this imposter. Or throw him in a well or something. Uh, Let's well he's, him. He's gonna make a, heartless Hank is gonna make an insight check. <laughs> this whole time, like, Merle and I are listening to this through the far stones, just like shaking our heads. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yes. he rolled a 15, so he is, uh, he is becoming increasingly agitated. He, uh, he says, I tell you what, bud, why don't, why don't you actually tell me my real name? Okay, okay I roll it just Sherlock this out. <laughs> I, I, roll per- I, roll his percep- I roll a perception check. Okay. <laughs> 16! He's wearing a necklace that says Bradley. No. <laughs> <laughs> it is completely conceivable he would have a name tag. Maybe. Or In a gang? Name? In a gang? Welcome to MS-13. Here's your name tag, Charles. Here's your HR packet. There's some stuff on investment in there. Some essential logins for our uh, health insurance portal. Um, but Which he, is an actual portal because we're playing Dungeons and Dragons. Right. Uh, he, quick as, quick as a flash, uh, reaches down to his belt and uh, pulls out a dagger and holds it at you. And Wait, says, I didn't get to answer the question, though. Yeah, okay. Bradley. Griffin, do you have the name in your head? Do you know this man's name? You're saying, okay, you're at, you actually want to take a shot in the dark. I'm going to write it down. <laughs> I'm going to write it down. No, this is, this is only how about fair. I, how about I tell, I'll take my headphones off for 10 seconds, and All you right. tell them, okay? No, well, no, because right. then Dad could tell you. He's, I won't tell him. He's got his headphones on. I'm on a microphone. You'll hear everything I say. Plus, he's our father, Griffin. Yeah, Kreskin. Is he gone? Yeah, he's yes. not listening. He's got his headphones off. Barbara. Excellent. Okay, you can put your headphones back on. Now, can we give him hints? Okay, he's holding this dagger right at you. He says, what's my name? Listen. We go back a long ways, right? No, we don't. We met two months ago. My name now. I'm a getcha. I'm a getcha like a fish. <laughs> <laughs> Your name, of course, is Taco. Okay. <laughs> Psych, uh, that's just mine. Say my name. I cast Magic Missile. <laughs> 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 okay, so uh, I'll give you a... running over there. <laughs> okay, so we'll do a quick surprise round, but Taco's the only person who's going to get the benefits of it. 
So cast magic missile. <laughs> come on. Oh, God, I actually have to cast it now. Yeah, right, yeah. Come on. Okay, so I create three glowing darts of magical force. Each w- hits with uh, one D4 plus one force damage to the target. They all strike simultaneously, and I, I can direct them to hit one creature or several. Yeah. Um, I'm going to... I think at this point we're all pretty familiar well, with okay. the magic missile sort of family okay, of products. Well, I am, I am uh, going to cast it as a second level spell, because I actually have more of those. Oh, damn. Um, and add another dart to it. Oh, so shit. it'll be... Uh, four 1d4 plus one force damage. Okay. Bolts. So, uh, three plus one four. Four plus one five. Nine. So that's nine, thanks. Two plus one three. Twelve. Three plus one. Thirty-six. No. no. Sixteen. That's Sixteen. Sixteen points. Okay. He rears back his dagger as you hesitate to tell uh, him his name. Uh, but before he can bring that dagger down on you, you twirl your umbrella around like a badass uh, gunslinger move. Uh, it opens up, and four darts of light simultaneously uh, shoot out of it. Uh, go take an arc through the air, and all four collide with him at the same time. Uh, he is staggered by this. You interrupt his uh, uh, attack, uh, but he is still standing. Uh, and let's get into what I'm sure will be a very, very short fight. <laughs> Have I reached them? Uh, you, Aunt Merle, were you running uh, towards the scene as well? I was waddling. Okay. Uh, you're, you're both about 25 feet uh, away from this scene. Uh, as we get into uh, initiative time. I okay. rolled an 11. Uh, one. Oh, damn. Yeah. 13. And you get to roll again. Remember? Oh, that's right. Y'all gotta remember your shits. 19 plus 1, so a 20. Okay. Uh, Merle is first in the order. Merle, you're about 25 feet away uh, from this scene. You all took off uh, running. You see uh, this this magical fireworks show, and uh, it's your turn. When we Uh, reach. Taco, why are you fighting with Barbara? Well, you wouldn't know his name. No, he said it earlier. You weren't there, Griffin. <laughs> You're right. Sorry. <laughs> I forget that sometimes you guys hang out with my characters without It me. was Barbara? Yeah, yeah. It was Barbara. I should have guessed Barbara. Uh, I'm, I'm just going to haul off and hit him with my Warhammer. I like okay. it. Okay. The roll of D20. Which I have named Smusher. Oh. Ooh, I well, like that. That's yeah, fun. I, I, yeah, I thought it was kind of cute. Uh, 11. Uh, that is a miss. Ooh. You you run in, yelling. Here comes the here comes the train, chug a chug a choo choo. Get ready to get smooshed. <laughs> uh, and you bring the smoosher down on him, and uh, it just sort of glances off his elbow. Whiff. You whiffed. Yeah. Uh, next in the order with the eleven was Magnus, I think. Yep. Okay. I'm gonna I'm gonna uh, two handed battle axe at him. Okay. Attempt to cleft him in twain. <laughs> okay. That is 13 plus 7, a 20. Yeah, that's a hit. And then 1d10 plus 6. That one's a d10. Oh, that's a 10 plus 6, 16. Okay, yeah. Uh, you don't cleft him in twain, but you get a pretty, you get pretty deep in him. Uh, and he falls to the ground. Uh, no! No! What's wrong? I never even learned his name. Yeah. <laughs> Barbara. Yeah, I'll never know. Yeah, it was Barbara. It, I'll never it figure Barbara. it out. It's lost in time. Nope, nope. It's it Barbara. says right here in his wallet, I am Barbara. I'll be- <laughs> Listen. I'll use also, process of elimination. gold and I'm taking them. I'll use process of elimination. It's clearly not Taco. <laughs> so that's one name down. We'll put uh, that on the tombstone. Let's start with Aaron. That's at the top, two A's. <laughs> As uh, as this man is bleeding out uh, at your feet, uh, you, you remember the uh, orders of Lieutenant Hurley, who uh, uh, humbly requested that you not murder anybody during this sneaking mission. 
Oh, I meant that non-lethally, Clefton. <laughs> you said Clefton Twain, sir. But I meant non-lethally. <laughs> Tell me, if you can explain to me how you cut somebody in half survivably. With my words. Yeah, what kind of gross Hannibal stuff are you, like, like uh, uh, expertise I meant, when human... I human... When I said Clefton Twain, I meant, like, cause some kind of psychological schism. That well, you've done that. Like, put him you've... in a fugue state. Yeah, he's in Wait, a state, all right. What if you cut him in half at the waist, thereby avoiding the life and death organs i cut him in half of the weights and then he just plops back together <laughs> do i have time to heal him uh yeah sure if you want to burn a healing spell on him oh good remind point. remind me what did hurley say would happen if we killed somebody well she's a cop so there's not i mean but she's not like prescient she won't no, know listen, this is gonna be a lot Okay, should we talk You're about gonna... this in character? Let's talk about this character. Yeah. Listen, um, I feel like she's going to be pretty hot. Okay, first off, let me own this one. <laughs> <laughs> because I did. This is on me, all right? This this one's tacos. But uh, it seems like we should heal him because if he die, like, Hurley, we need her on our side. Um, Now, there is one other option. Maybe we just disappear this little problem. <laughs> You know, that she didn't say anything about uh, these guys wandering off, you know, wandering off and no one ever hears from them again. She didn't say anything about that, right? Good point. Maybe, yeah, maybe we might need those. We might need those heel slots. We may need the heel slots. We're definitely not going to need a corpse. So you're saying we eat him? <laughs> what I'm saying? No. What? Oh my God. No, no. Wait. No. Stop <laughs> recommending that, Merle. Who said anything about eating? Kidding. Him? Kidding. <laughs> we just need to like. Get Maybe an extra dimensional hole. Oh, if only one of us had that. Uh... Wait, uh, so I'm not. You're not going to burn a heel, but I'm going to burn. Let's face you it. If you look at our history, him? how about you take an extra dimensional shovel and dig a fucking hole? <laughs> how about that? <laughs> how about that thing I said? That's an option. Lazy bones. <laughs> Griffin, are there any wells? <laughs> Are there any wells nearby? Do I see any wells? We're hell on wells. Yeah, or maybe these... like a pig farm. <laughs> Uh, work? No, you are. Uh, there are no wells nearby, so you you are open maybe, graves. No open graves. You're Corn about field. two blocks away from the edge of Gold Cliff, from the cliff of Gold Cliff. I'll be right back. Let's uh, toss this let's put a pin in this. I'll be right back. Got a you know, you guys, body. No, let's just work together. It'll make a better fan art that way. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you grab a leg. You grab a thigh and a wing. I'll get this side. And let's get it eaten. Well, okay. no, again, what? I thought we were talking about eating him. Not going to eat him. Huh. We're going to chuck him. We'll not regret it Ooh. later. All right, we carry the body. It's dark, right? So we carry the body uh, through. Th through uh, uh, yeah, it's dark. So you, you carry the body out of this seedy uh, side street where the Hammerhead's headquarters is located. Uh, towards the edge of town, the buildings get uh, a bit nicer because there's actually a pretty scenic view uh, sure. over overlooking the cliff. Uh, looking over, there's a, a big basin of water that the uh, waterfalls uh, that are pouring out of Gold Cliff are feeding. Uh, it's a really lovely view, uh, but it is dark and, and nobody's out on the streets tonight. <laughs> um, so you're on the edge. You're on the precipice of glory. I, I feel like somebody should say something. I'll say okay, something. Geronimo! I'll, uh, let, uh, let me say something. We should check his pockets, yeah. because I oh, don't yeah. think we oh, yeah, checked. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, we find we, the keys to the place. What did we find? Uh, you did You did find a key. Uh, you find uh, a picture of his wife and kids. Oh, they're uh, kind of ugly. Uh, yeah, and they're all holding, they're all holding swords. And they, they look, look racist. They look, yeah. <laughs> they're all wearing... <laughs> they have a racist look about them. They have a racist look. I, you saw that too, right? Yeah, These the, people the look little racist. kid has a, a shirt about orcs. It's very offensive, and I won't... Very yeah. offensive. They're wearing um, a fantasy Confederate flag t-shirts, so it's like a Confederate <laughs> flag, but it has, like, dragons on it. I don't even know why Fantasy Spencer sells those. <laughs> no. Uh, it says it's and, fantasy ironic, but let's be honest. It's just fantasy offensive. And he uh, has a pouch with 300 gold coins inside of it. So this He's guy must have just boy. He, must have, he must have just won a poker game or something. Yeah, well, <laughs> life giveth and life taketh away, huh? Well, life giveth and we taketh away. Well, they have more specifically, yes. We'll always remember you, not Taco. And 
Probably not Aaron. Uh, so we, I, I mean, I let's chuck him. He's chuck. gone. Okay, we'll call him Chuck. Okay, when I was just opening my extreme team Bible, Chuck goes flying uh, ashes through to the ashes. air. Uh, oh, damn! And he gets smaller and smaller uh, and smaller, and pretty soon you can't can't see him anymore as he falls uh, way way down. Uh, okay, mission accomplished, guys. <laughs> we, we killed a guy. to Hurley. Drinks all around. Well, what? What? Were we doing something? All right, well, let's head in. Uh, Okay, you head back to the Hammerhead base, uh, cautiously stepping over the sleeping little Jerry on your way back. And the pool of blood that we kind of, like, shuffle some sawdust over. Yeah, (laughs) yeah. Uh, Yeah, you you get rid of the traces of your heinous act. It was all in self-defense, though. It was self-offense? Is that a thing? Self-offense. Okay. Uh, It's like never to speak of it again until next summer. You make your way back to... Oh, God, I'm totally going to use that. Um, you make your way back to the front entrance of the Hammerhead base. Again, the walls are, are pretty high. Uh, about I think I said about 12 feet with uh, thick barbed wire uh, on the top of it. There's a small uh, entrance in the uh, large gate. That's the one that uh, one of the guards went back into, the one that you fooled, Magnus. And then there is a booth next to the gate. And that is where the booth guard was. And there's probably some way to open the gate in the booth. Is it like a automated thing? Uh, you did see the, the booth attendant open up the door to let the other guy in. So do we want to try the key on the booth? Yeah. The door to the booth? Okay. Okay. Type uh, in try key on booth. Okay. You try key on booth. Uh, you just like start ramming the key into the booth and it doesn't do anything. But um, then you remember how keys work. Uh, and put it into the keyhole, and it opens the uh, door to the booth. Success! Hooray! Thanks. Yay, us! We've solved the booth puzzle. <laughs> well, you used a key on a keyhole. <laughs> Let's not get crazy. Uh, victory inside, where victory can be found. Uh, inside, there is a large lever that says gate control uh, and a small button that says door control on it. Hmm. Well, what now? It could be a trick. Let's not open the gate. Let's open the door. We push the button. Okay. Uh, You push the open door button, and sure enough, the smaller door uh, that is built into the much, much larger gate uh, pops open, allowing you access. We did it. Let's access. As you enter the Hammerhead base proper, uh, you sort of get the lay of the land, uh, there isn't anybody out in the main field of this base. Uh, it is all surrounded by this same 12-foot uh, wall. This is the only point, the only obvious access point in and out of this space. Um, but it is a large open uh, uh, field uh, with three buildings. Uh, one is uh, the largest building. Uh, it is a very long building with uh, a bunch of garage doors built into it uh, and ramps leading up uh, in through those doors. Uh, one of the doors, the one on the far left, is open. The other uh, five are closed. Uh, so, so this is a this is a a very big uh, garage. You can hear people inside of it. Uh, you hear the sound of you know metal hitting metal. You hear the sound of work. Uh, you hear, you know, people having conversations, you see some light, uh, like sparks, uh, coming through that open door. Uh, so, so you get the idea that there's a a bunch of activity in this big, big garage, uh, to you. That's directly in front of you to your left. There is a much smaller building, uh, with, uh, just one garage door on it, uh, and no windows. It is just sort of a plain cinder block, uh, building, uh, just one story high uh, and, and significantly smaller than the other garage. Uh, and then to your right is a uh, another one-story building uh, that is pretty long. There's no garage doors on this one, but there are a, a few windows and uh, 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 just one door uh, on the front of it. And uh, that is that is the lay of the land. You got a big garage, a small garage, and what looks like a like a tiny little one story flat magnus points at his eyes like does the two fingers like my eye like let's look in the little building and like points at the little building 
Are there people who are going to see us between here and there? Uh, there's nobody out in just sort of the general concourse okay. area here. Okay. Well, let's go. Let's go check it out then. We do full on like a, a Looney Tune sneak. Okay. Do you guys want to do a, a full blown st- sneak check for me? <laughs> oh, yeah. sure. I forgot how the game works. Uh, 13 plus. I, I'm I have, looking for my sneak. It's stealth. <clears throat> stealth. Uh, okay. 13 plus thir- 16. I got 14. I got four. Okay. Merle. No modifier there? You have a modifier, Dad? Not in stealth. You clanky bastard. I am a big old clanky bastard. Uh, Merle just sneezes. Merle just. That's you! No control. No control over it. Um, it's high pollen season. It's all this grass. Cliff, it's all the grass. Which is Ugh. weird because you're like a nature cleric. You would th- anyway, uh, you sneeze. Uh, you, you hear the activity inside the large garage kind of stop for a second. And the three we of you freeze. stand perfectly still. And then it continues. They continue working inside. Uh, the three of you creep over to uh, the small garage uh, trying to sort of ascertain what's going on. Uh, if, if there is a hole through which to peek inside of this this small garage, you, you cannot find it. Uh, it seems pretty pretty impermeable. Um, uh, the garage door is uh, uh, a thick, heavy metal, uh, unlike the garage doors on the main garage. Uh, and it is secured by a padlock that is like the size of Merle. Uh, th- this this building is locked the hell down. Mm, see this uh, this is whispering. I I'm gonna say it at normal level so it doesn't throw off my recording. But I am whispering now as Magnus. <laughs> okay, this will be. Fun. This sounds like no. This seems like this building is where they're keeping some kind of like prototype engine wagon thing, right? Seems pretty well secured. Yeah, I I think you're probably right. Um. I've never been to a garage <laughs> before, but um, your read on it seems good. Merle, what do you what do you think? Uh, yeah, but I know our dungeon master pretty well, and I think that if what is a dungeon <laughs> master? I meant, I meant I know that those dungeon bastards. I know yeah. when they now design with, these things. No, I'm with you. Usually the first thing they want you to look at yeah. is the last thing you want to look at. Can I say something? Yeah. Yeah. I'm not even sure. This is kind of a Schrodinger's cat thing. I'm not even sure it is in there or not in there at this exact moment. It won't be in there unless we look in there and see. It doesn't exist. There could Got be it. a prototype with type wagon in there. It could be full of dogs. Could be just chalk ceiling to floor full of wild, vicious dogs. So or tameable, like, sweet dogs. Do hey, hey, here's a question. That, like, do any of us have any sort of like lock picking no abilities? Like none, oh, right? Man, that would be so great, but no. Wow. Wow, it would be great to not have to blast every door open like I'm <laughs> Superman. So with my vehicle proficiency. Let me tell you what I know about said, garages. Travis cast sense vehicles. <laughs> Let me tell you what I know about garages. My bet is that one with all the doors is like the workshop where they like all work on cars together. The building with no garages is the office headquarters hangout of the gang. This seems like the place where they keep their like number one rent winning, uh, winningest Mach uh, five wagon. So there is a door that does have that we can see a lock, right? Yeah, it's the size of Merle. Okay, Merle, do you have any th- anything that would be like quiet? That's that's my my concern. Mm. All my shit is loud. Yeah, I I mean I could do like. Um, do you have ah! a low hamora, Justin? Ah, I do have a spell called silence. For the duration, no sound can be created within or pass through a 20-foot radius sphere centered on a point you choose within range. What if I cast that at the door and then and then you beat the shit out of yeah, it? Yeah, he uses the Phantom Fist uh, uh, lockpick. Okay. I, again, I, I stressed this the last time we played. Phantom Fist is not a nuclear <laughs> bomb. Card. 
Right. The Phantom Fist allows you to punch enemies and move them far away from you. But it, it Does... will not it will not melt steel beams. Griffin, I would like to roll a perception check, maybe insight check, to see if Magnus thinks he could chop the lock, <laughs> given... You, you have uh, to do an insight check to figure out what you're thinking? Oh, that's why I said perception. I don't want to just ask the question, DM, could I chop the lock? Uh, that, that wouldn't, be, like that wouldn't be any kind of check. It doesn't... It, I mean, it would take some some doing. Oh, and hey, I don't want to hurt yeah. Rail Splitter. I got th- I got this. I got this. Okay. I cast Clairvoyance. That allows me to put a marker into an uh, an obvious location that is unfamiliar to me, such as behind a door, uh, and it remains in place for the duration. When I cast the spell, I could choose seeing or hearing, so I'm going to go with seeing, um, and I can use the chosen sense through the sensor as if I were in the in the space. Um, and as an nice. action, I can switch between seeing and hearing. Oh, that's convenient. Yeah, it works out pretty good. So I'm going to cast clairvoyance behind the door, seeing. Uh, let me check that spell slot off because it's a third level spell. This is like the legit magic here. I'm going to need to focus. <laughs> magic. There, okay. I cast it. You That's whisper. The sound it makes. You whisper. Magic. Uh, <laughs> magic. And uh, press the digitation. Grasping <laughs> onto your magic umbrella, uh, uh, Merle and Magnus, you see a, a, a third eye glowing a, a bright blue on, on Taco's on Taco's butt uh, <laughs> as he closes his two non butt eyes. Uh, Taco, you can see. Uh, d- does your does your third eye have like any kind of light, vi- dark vision, anything like that? Um, okay, well, so I can see as the. Uh, I can use the sense as though I were in its place, and I can see in the dark. Okay. So, yes. Uh, then you see, using your infrared vision that's built into your elven eyes, uh, what <laughs> looks like a tank. It looks like it's a wagon. It is it is a battle wagon, but it resembles a tank. A tank uh, that on the front of it uh, has three rows of sharp teeth. Uh, and mounted above those teeth are two gigantic cannons. Uh, and then inside of the the mouth of this tank uh, is a large grappling hook, a large, spiny, very violent-looking grappling hook. Uh, and then above that is the uh, you know driver's cabin uh, of this uh, tank. And then mounted above that on the roof of this tank uh, it looks like there is another sort of shielded compartment. Um, and as you sort of take in this vehicle, uh, you, you realize that it, it is a tank shaped battle wagon, but it's also kind of in the shape of a shark. I don't know that much about the core thing that I'm looking for. Would I know enough to know if it's like been installed in this tank or, uh, no, you wouldn't know that. Well, guys, good news, bad news, <laughs> bad news, tank. Good news, not dogs. <laughs> Great. I would say that our next stop is building number three, the headquarters, because we can hear people in building number one. We know that there's, like, at least more than one. Uh, here's a, here's a, I, th- I think we should go to the other building. Yes. And, and take a look at building number three. Er, Ooh, three, right? the scuttlebug. No, you don't have it anymore, Travis. Why do you keep bringing that up? Griffin took Scuddy away. You took you took it away from yourself with your actions. I don't look at it that way. <laughs> I love the Scuttle Buddy. Yeah, we all did. It was very brandable. I was. Did you know I was in the talks with Hasbro? I was in the talks with Hasbro. Hey, speaking of Hasbro, listen. If any of you have like uh, Hot Wheels or anything like that, these uh, these battle wagons would be pretty nifty Christmas presents. Are you asking who makes hot? You just used our podcast to add. I can Siri that for you. <laughs> No, no, no! I don't want. That. I just. I'm just you, saying. Nobody can any... respond to you in the podcast and tell if you Mattel who Mattel is out there. Mattel, Mattel licensing listening. people. You know, I'm just saying. Hey everyone, this is Griffin McElroy, your dungeon master, your good, good buddy. Thank you for listening to the Adventure Zone episode twenty-two. Uh, subtitled, The McElroys Fight a Bunch of Joe Pesci's from Home Alone. 
macro the the adventure zone the pesci wars is what this uh arc should have been titled but i didn't know i didn't know that this is going to be such a an important angle this week's episode of the adventure zone is brought to you by nature box nature box is where you can get tons of great tasting healthy snacks uh they have tons of snack choices like mini belgian waffles strawberry lemonade fruit stars sweet and salty nut medley asiago cheese crisps some crazy shit where they put like blueberry yogurt up on a pretzel it's totally great uh you can get all of that ordered sent to your house in a discreet box uh, ready ready for you to chew down on it uh it's full of flavor without any of that junk and right now you can enjoy your first box of nature box snacks on nature box if you go to naturebox.com slash adventure they'll send you a box with uh, some some samplings in it and uh you'll, you'll get to eat it for free and sustain yourself there's no such thing as a free lunch unless you eat this for lunch because it's free Anyway, that's NatureBox. Again, naturebox.com slash adventure. Got a few Jumbotron messages here. If you want to get a message on the show, you can go to MaximumFun.org slash Jumbotron and uh, get get a spot on this show or any of the other fine shows in the Maximum Fun family of products. Uh, this message, though, is for Mikey Person, and it's from Heather Person. I'm assuming that's their last name and not some weird self-identification. Hello, I'm Griffin comma person just kidding i'm a sentient pizza it's like midnight the night before we're leaving town on our tour so i'm a little i'm a little getting a little sleep silly anyway mikey here is your message from heather it reads to my favorite husband you are my garris vicar oh shit i'm gonna catch a lot of shit for fucking that up you are my garris valkarian and I wanted to wish you a happy anniversary on our favorite podcast on the Citad I mean, on the Maximum Fun Network. Here's to the rest of our lives, testing your reach and my flexibility. Sorry this message is so late. I guess we'll have to change the date of our anniversary. I like that. I like that a lot. Um, you, you meet us in the middle, and we'll do our best, and you do our best. It sounds like you've done your best, because it sounds like you two are very much in love with each other. Happy anniversary, you two. Got another message here. It's for Brian and Tristan, and it's from Cat and Gerbil. Cat and Gerbil say, Meow, squeak, squeak. Nah, I'm just kidding. There's a real message here. Cat and Gerbil say, Hey, Brian and Tristan, happy birthdays from the Adventure Zone. Even though we moved away, you're still our best friends, and we always love to see you during our games. Here's hoping for many more years of zany adventures filled with dungeons, dragons, robots, creepy old ghosts, fuzzy animals, and the gang. How did you know that's the next story arc? Is going to be full of robots, creepy old ghosts, and fuzzy animals. But no dungeons or dragons. I have a very strict anti-dungeon anti-dragon policy here on the adventure zone thank you for writing in and happy birthdays brian and tristan and one more message here this one's for Jin, and it's from malcolm who says i love you lots here's to five years of marriage and many more to come each year we've been together you have filled in the parts of me i thought would be missing forever congratulations you've solved my heart puzzle oh shit that's great that's really good. A lot of love on this week's show. It's such a shame that all of these missives of love had to follow such a a, a grisly um, corpse hiding. But, well, you, you take the good, you take the bad, you take them both. And that's the Adventure Zone. Happy love, Jen and Malcolm. A few quick announcements for all y'all. Uh, we are doing a live, our first ever live Adventure Zone. Uh, during L.A. PodFest. We're also doing a live My Brother, My Brother, and Me. If you're going to be in L.A., you can still get tickets to the festival. There's a ton of really great shows that are going to be there, like the Indoor Kids, uh, WTF, and the Giant Bombcast. Uh, If you're not going to be in L.A., you're not going to be able to make it. It's uh, the weekend of September 18th through the 20th, I think. I'm checking. Yes. Uh, If you're not going to be able to make it, you can stream the whole event. You can watch all of the shows. Uh, streaming live, including ours. If you go to LAPodFest.com, you can get your streaming ticket there. Usually it'll cost you 25 bucks, but we can save you 5 bucks off that if you use the coupon code ZONE. When you're checking out, you can save 5 bucks. It'll help us out a little bit too, and you'll be able to watch all the shows live. Uh, they also archive them for a month, so if you can't watch them live, you can watch them later. Uh, so yeah, again, LAPodFest.com, use the coupon code ZONE. 
Thank you to everybody who tweeted about the show using the Zonecast, the hashtag. Uh, I was going to introduce another new character in this week's episode, but we didn't get around to it. But uh, yeah, if you tweet using the Zonecast, the hashtag, you might end up as a character in the game, like Captain Captain Bane or Lieutenant Hurley. Thanks for sharing the show with all your friends. We don't spend a dime on advertising, so it's the only way that we have of getting the word out there. So we really, really appreciate that. And uh, I think that's it. Go listen to the other Maximum Fun shows. They're all really terrific. If you're going to PAX this weekend, Justin, Travis, and I are doing My Brother, My Brother, and Me in Seattle on Saturday, uh, and there's still tickets available for that. You can get them at bit.ly forward slash Seattle. We will have another episode up for all y'all on September the 10th. So we will talk to you then. Bye. So let's check building three. Yeah. The, um... Yeah, let's go. And by the way, you're not the only guy with clairvoyance. <laughs> oh, excellent. That's that's wonderful. Excellent. I, I, excellent I don't have it. Just, I just want to make that. I don't want to like try to pull that card later. Was, Ross assumed... says sublimination. Yeah. Uh, let's go over that building. I'll use clairvoyance. And we'll see what's in there. It's not me. It's not you. It's not Barbara. He's dead. So it's me. Bar- it's him. Yeah. It's him. Okay. So you're going over to the other building and now. Uh, this Merle, one has gonna... windows, though. Yeah, I'm glad that somebody pointed that out. I can just, like, oh. pop Merle on my shoulders. We actually don't even need to go over there. We can just chill. If you're going to clairvoyant it? Yeah, I mean... He well, just... no, but we don't need to if there's windows. Yeah, that's Travis no, makes that's a great true. point. Yeah, that's true. Uh, Do we okay. have to sneak again? Uh, no, I'm... No. Uh, okay, I like this tableau that uh, Travis has just suggested of Merle climbing up on Magnus. We're going to do a little Musicians of Brennan here. Well, uh, what? <sighs> There's like three people that got that reference and really appreciated it. I don't think I don't. I feel like that's a liberal. The story is this, Griffin. There's some animals, right? And they want. All right, all right, all right. You're on his shoulders. You're on his shoulders. All right. I feel like a child at the circus, but okay. (laughs) Now, Uh, am I standing on his shoulders, or is it like Daddy carrying cotton candy? You are on a baby Bjorn on Magnus's (laughs) chest, which is weird because it's like he is actually higher than you. In this situation. let me let me describe what I see, but I'm going to do it in Griffin's voice. Okay, uh, you see, uh, in inside of this building, I you, see, I I see, I see. I'm me. doing it in your voice, <clears throat> M- Merle. I'm a yeah. poopy pee pee boy. <laughs> wow, wow, wow! Hear me cry Got like him. a poopy baby. Well, I'm sitting on Travis's <laughs> shoulders, so. <laughs> um, I see uh, uh, rows of bunk beds with uh, some storage chests at the foot of each one. Uh, you see some lewd posters on the wall. Ugh. You see some, dow- I see some doused lanterns uh, all around the room on some end tables. It looks like your standard issue sort of bunk. Uh, and, uh, from, from this window, from this vantage point, you can only see, uh, two, uh, rough looking individuals, uh, asleep. Uh, one is across the room from the window you're looking at. Uh, he's on the top bunk. Uh, and then just to your left, uh, through, through this one, just to my left through this window, uh, you see another ruffian asleep on the bottom bunk. Hmm. You know, we haven't checked the doors to even see if it's locked. Well, we wanted to scope out before we just, like, walked in. You never broke into a place before, Dad? They're exhausted from looking at their lewd posters. (laughs) Oh, that'll take it out of you, though. That's fair. (laughs) They were practicing their cantrips. Uh, Well, okay, I try the door. It's quietly now. It is unlocked. Yeah. Okay. Let me cast silence. Let me use that silence. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, Cast silence. Yeah. Well, we don't want to wake them up. Like, we're going to have to do a sneak check. Let's just, like, not wake them up. Uh, So you're just casting silence inside of this room? Yeah. Right, Dad? Yeah. Okay, yeah. It, it'll encompass most of the room. Um, okay. uh, are you going to sort of shape it so it doesn't... It, it's a 20-foot it, radius sphere, so wouldn't that pretty much be right, the but whole if room? It, if, it, if they're inside of that sphere, can they hear you? No. Uh, I thought it just. Okay. I thought it was like a Ziploc, keeps the good, good sounds in, keeps the bad sounds out. No, I think it's only silent. Like no, no within... sound could be created within that twenty foot radius. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You you drop it inside of uh, just in of the middle. Of course, that means we room. can't talk to each other. Uh, We've got all of our hand signals. The worst things. You drop it okay. in the middle of the room, and sure enough, you one of the the ruffians was just like sawing logs, like 
like really, really bad. Uh, and that just disappears. Um, so either he has just suddenly died, which means another trip back to Cliff City, uh, or your silence spell has activated in its intended way. Or I Griffin, cured his in, sleep apnea. Yeah. In all of these bunks, is there one that looks like, oh, that's the main dude's bunk? Yeah, you, it's, it's hard to see anything. Are you looking for the most lewd poster? No, I'm looking to see if there's anywhere where, like, there might be a diary or a key hung on a hook or Dear diary, something. Dear diary, jammed it again to these totally rad posters. <laughs> Dear mother, thank you again for the totally lewd, crude, and rude poster of the babe. They're quite scintillating. Thank you, Mama. <laughs> you know the way to my libido, Mama. Let it, let it, oh, you know my love of otherwise. half orc, half centaur women. <laughs> um, mm. There is one chest that is open. Uh, and inside, you can see uh, some some roughshod-looking clothing. Uh, One chest that is open other than Barbara's, you mean. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, that, that, is the, that is the situation in here. You can start overturning these chests if you want. It's going to be quiet. I'm yeah fine. Like we why restrain why restrain ourselves now? It's hog wild. Yeah. yeah. Okay. You you start popping chests open. It seems like most we're of these throwing are just clothes sort of... in the air like the Great Gatsby. Everybody's just like wee. Yeah. You you you're you're not finding any like valuables. You're not finding the core, but you are finding like a lot of clothing. Um, that kind of almost seems like a like a a, a hammerhead like uniform almost. Hell um, yes. There's One a, might a, say a disguise. There are leather jackets with a badass looking shark. Uh, oh, I take, that that anyway. I take three of those. Okay. Do we have? Are there enough components in here that we could cobble together something that uh, approximating a, a, a uniform or disguise for for each of the three of us? Yeah, maybe slap a little bit of grease paint on on you know your 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 parts, and uh, you could you could probably pass for a pass for a, a, a hammerhead. I do that. I, do I, sh- I sure hope one of these uniforms has short pants. Uh, yeah, there is actually a dwarven uniform. You can get so all. all You're three not of the you- only dwarf in the world. Yeah. So the three of you are all all uh, dressing up. Yeah. Montage. <laughs> the three of you. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna definitely put some like uh, '80s synth pop under here <laughs> as the three of you do each other's makeup and. Uh, try and step surprise. out as everybody like crosses their arms and shakes their head, and we go back and try a different hat on. Oh you, yeah, yeah. You chase each other around. Uh, I'll go with girls. Just want to have fun. That okay. would be perfect. Well, it would be if we can get if we can get we Captain got, Lou Albano to come out of. We can't get the rights. The grave. The rights. We gotta. Okay, but yeah, the the three of you come out of the uh, of the bunk fully fully decked out in hammerhead gear. Cool. Okay. Uh, should we away to uh, building one one? Yeah. yeah, that seems really... like the only building left. Yeah. Okay. Of the three, it's definitely the one we haven't looked at. Hey, can we have caps? Can we have really cool caps? What caps? kind of caps? You know, like ball caps on our head. You know, something really neat. Ooh, I like want a like a cappy hat. No, oh. there's no... The, one of, yeah, one of these... A bowler. Well, well I'm wearing... thinking if we had a hat, that way it would help disguise our features. Yeah, do we have hats? There are hats, but they're, unfortunately, it's only fedoras. Oh, no. So you're going to go check out Big Garage? Let's yes. check out Big Garage. Let's check it out. Uh, how are you going to do that? Are you going to just waltz right in? Are you going to pee through the door? What are you doing? Well, in our now, disguises... Now, Magnus believes the way to infiltrate anything in disguise is with confidence. Yeah, for sure. Let's just walk right in the front Act door. Act like we belong there. Act like we belong. Act like you've been there before. That's what I say. Okay. Uh, the three of you uh, waltz... Right into the uh, open door. Wait, of are there the, windows? <laughs> uh, there are no windows. No, there's just. It would just be more suspicious to peep in windows. I think. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Well, here's what we do: we walk in and we're all singing "Greased Lightning." Oh, that's good. Like the T birds. Yeah, yeah. I love it. Greased Lightning. That's how that goes. <laughs> okay. No question about that. <laughs> they will welcome us with open, greasy arms. <laughs> Uh, the three of you walk into uh, this room singing uh, show tunes, uh, and everyone inside this building looks at you and kills you. No, they look at you, uh, uh, interrupt, you interrupt the hard work that's going on, and the hard automotive work. Uh, they look at you for a second. You stand perfectly still. 
<laughs> hey guys, the, these are the new recruits. Uh, walk, I'm showing them around the place. Just go about your business. Don't worry about it. They all look at you in stunned silence. And then they get back to work, working on their cars. Yeah! And and what have Bullet you. did it! Yeah! We uh, solved in, the puzzle! We in, have solved your guys looking at us puzzle. <laughs> inside of this room, uh, you see uh, th- th- there are a few people in here. Uh, there are uh, two of these ruffians wearing these hammerhead uniforms uh, that are working on a much smaller battle wagon than the, uh, the the one that you clairvoyantly saw inside of that garage taco. Uh, altogether, there are three battle wagons in this room, uh, one of which is sort of suspended in the air on uh, those uh, on, on that lift platform that they have in garages sometimes. Uh, so you got two ruffians working on one car. Uh, you have uh, one ruffian uh, who looks uh, considerably cleaner than the others, who's sitting at a desk going over some paperwork. Uh, he was definitely giving you the most side eye as you came in. Uh, there is, uh, there are two other, two more ruffians, so four total, and the clean one. Uh, the other two ruffians are in the corner, and they are holding clubs, and they are, um, they're messing with a, a, a sixth figure in this room. Uh, this sixth figure is not wearing the hammerhead uniform. Uh, they are pretty gigantic uh and they are sort of uh covered in in this burlap uh crude cloth outfit they are chained to a chair and they are wearing this full metal helmet uh that is just sort of completely encapsulating their their head uh but but these two these two ruffians are just sort of given this this uh captured figure uh, a really rough time uh, there is scrap, I, just piles of scrap lying all over, uh, uh, and, uh, yeah, that is the, uh, situation. The, uh, the ruffian sitting at the desk, uh, stands up and says, uh, uh, so, so Taco, are you still disguised as little, little Jerry? I am, yes. Okay. I uh, want everyone to know that when Magnus sees this figure getting beaten up, it's really hard for him not to, like... Sure. Run over there and stop him. Oh, uh, it's one like very of, upsetting to him. One of the two guys that's beating up this figure is is regular Jerry, the one that that Magnus chased inside. Ooh. Um, and uh, regular Jerry sees sees Magnus and yells across the room, "Why didn't you wait at the door, little well, Jerry? I was going to take care of this. I was just sort of putting him on putting him on ice, giving him a well, freeze out, see if he really look, wanted it." Look, we recruited him. Now we got our own, like, holy man. It's got to be good luck, right? Guess that would be fun. We could do, like, church services and stuff here on yeah. Sundays. I would like to try to ingratiate myself using my vehicle proficiency okay. to look under the suspended cart and give some sort of insight that they're like, oh, he knows his shit. <laughs> okay, but I'm not going to let you just say that. You're going to have to do it because I want to yeah, hear it. I just it. don't know what that role is. Okay, so while uh, regular Jerry is talking to this guy at the desk, like, so yeah, these uh, these are the new guys. Uh, uh, they they came here. What what do you what do you think? And uh, the 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 clean guy goes, yeah, I don't know. I feel like maybe it's not time really for us to expand. You know, I'm not looking to split our winnings any more than we already have. I don't know what these two guys could bring to the table except for a little bit of divinity in the short one's case. I see here that you've got your suspension connected counterclockwise. You know, if you do that in a counterclockwise clockwise motion so that each one is interacting with the other one independently, you're going to get much better handling. Uh, regular Jerry says, what the hell are you talking about? Listen to this guy. That makes perfect sense to me. Another person who knows about cars. You're saying Wagons. if we... I don't even understand how something could be counterclockwise and clockwise in the same sort of orientation. Why don't you do oh, it? Oh, you need to put a second set of gears so that each one is moving independently instead of one driving force driving both of them at the same time. The guy sitting at the desk goes, double gears, of course. Why didn't we think of that? Hey, see what I tell you? He's a real genius. Uh, He's a real uh, Einstein. I want to see you. Can you pop, pop, pop the the suspension out in the way that you you're suggesting? I want to see if uh, I want to see how it actually works. Can you can you do that for me? Oh, of course. Uh, hand me that set of gear. No, the the eight teeth. Yes. I can't tell where the fake stuff starts and the real stuff begins because I'm vehicle anything. proficient. I know what the fuck I'm talking about. Okay. <laughs> so I'm under there and I'm doing some shit. 
And okay. I'm working on it. And I uh, say to Jerry, I say, uh, while he's doing this, I say, hey, listen, you know, um, this guy is real sharp. We should show him the uh, the core after this. See what he uh, makes of that, huh? Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I guess I guess so. I'm sure if, if he's this proficient with vehicles, I'm sure he's seen a, an arcane core before. And I finish. Oh, my God. He's, this this guy's like some sort of car, some wagon Houdini. He, he's he's... He's a, a Honda Merlin. I, <laughs> <laughs> as, as you were showing off your proficiency, uh, this, this chained up figure uh, has sort of just been looking at the floor dejected. Uh, and it looks up and you can actually see two eye holes are cut into this uh, full metal helmet. Oh, crap. And he sees the three of you. Uh, or should I say he sees the two of you and taco disguised as little jerry and from inside of his mask you hear him go <laughs> and, he and he starts he to shake and, and <laughs> he poops he might poop he's very angry he he's shaking he's rattling his chains he's he's moving trying to get out of his uh his bindings as near as i could tell have have, have i ever seen this cat before i mean his 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 Whole head is encased in metal, and I know, but there's like other people have other body parts. I'm just asking if if he if if the sound or if I recognize him as somebody we've run into before. Uh, it's it's gonna be hard to say. I will say the only thing that you can sort of see, other than this like burlap jumpsuit, uh, uh through the eye holes, it almost looks like he's like kind of her suit. He's kind of hairy in there. I don't know. Is that somebody we know? Uh, but he is freaking the hell out. Uh, and uh, regular Jerry goes, uh, yo, calm down! And he hits him with a club. Uh, and uh, he he passes out, it seems like. Yeah, calm down! And then I hit him in the stomach. Okay, like, Not hard, though. I kind of pull it. <laughs> and uh, the guy sitting at the desk goes, hey, 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 cool, cool it. Hey, okay. Let's not go crazy, okay? Hey, this guy pooped himself. I'm going to take him outside and change him. There's no reason you guys should have to see that. I think he'll be fine. I think we can let him stew. I want to talk to these two. Great, let's live in this stink. This is cool. Cool day. Cool garage. You know, my problem with the garage is always it smells so good. Now it just now we really are fixing that up with a poop sink. <laughs> I don't know what I don't know what to tell. Listen, if we'd have to unchain him. He could he could fight us. I'm not interested in that. It's real hard to get this guy in his bindings. And and it's gonna be hard until we can you know indoctrinate him, get him get him working for us. But once he does, oh boy, God, I'm real excited about the possibilities that this guy's bringing to the table. Uh, I'm gonna ask a question. Hey, who's the guy in the metal helmet? <laughs> uh, let's just call him a rare import. We uh we managed to secure him uh, out of state and uh, bring him in. It's not uh, exactly on the books. Uh, but we paid a pretty penny for him, and, uh, I think he's, uh, I think he's gonna pay out big dividends out on the track. Hey, DM? Yeah? Just out of clarity, so I can write it down, is, is he, like, human-sized, or, uh, like, he is ogre-sized? He, he is humanoid, um, but he's about, uh, seven feet tall, uh, big, big and burly. Oh my god, I know who it is. It's the bugbear. <gasps> it's the bugbear. What's a bugbear? It's my hug bear. His hug bear. Oh. Clark. Clark. It's Clark. You see a single tear run out of the eye holes in this full metal helmet. <sighs> I'm gonna have to punch. <laughs> Just real quick before I let you go, I did want to shout out one more time to my main man, Nature Box. <laughs> Nature Box is where you can order hundreds of great tasting, healthy snacks. If you go to naturebox.com slash adventure, you can sign up for a free sampler box of great tasting, healthy snacks. Next episode's up on Thursday, September 10th. 
and I will talk to you then. MaximumFun.org. Comedy and culture. Artist owned. Listener supported. Hey everyone, we're the Flop House, one of the newest additions to the Maximum Fun Podcasting Network. I'm Dan McCoy. I'm Stuart Wellington. And I'm Elliot Kalin. What is the Flop House, you may very well ask? We watch a bad movie and then we talk about it. A bad movie podcast? Isn't that like every fifth podcast on the internet? I'd answer that by saying, one, we've been doing this show for over seven years, long before the entire premise of our show was a cliche, and two, shut up. Sick burn. I'd say that our show is more of a comedy podcast. A podcast about words that sound like other words. A podcast about me singing long, irritating songs like this one. A podcast about pitches for a Ziggy comic book movie. Or discussions about sex tarps. Yeah, I mean, mostly it's a show about three friends just hanging out. And talking about ding-dongs. That's mostly used to. Wait, what? So, if you like any of those things, subscribe in iTunes today. Or visit MaximumFun.org to follow the show. The Flophouse! Woo!